Good day and welcome to Big Bad Tech. I'm your instructor, Jim Pytel, and today's topic of discussion is timers executing the on and off delay function. Our objective is to introduce the on and off delay function and put it to use in some illustrated examples. This lecture operates under the assumption you've watched the timers on delay and timers off delay lectures, both available at the Big Bad Tech channel. If you haven't watched these lectures yet or only dimly recall their contents, please take the time, pardon the pun, to do so now. Recall that a timer is a control device that exhibits a time-based shift between the assertion of its controlling input and the activation or deactivation of its associated contacts. Timers can perform numerous functions including, but not limited to, on delay, off delay, on and off delay, flash, repeat or recycle, positive or negative edge triggered one shots, cumulative on delays, and more. Today's lecture deals exclusively with the on and off delay function, which should be a breeze because it's obviously a combination of the two previously discussed functions, on delay and off delay. Before we dive into an in-depth discussion of the on and off delay function, allow me to perform a brief walkthrough and review of common timer functions. My intention in doing this walkthrough is not to confuse you, but rather to compare and contrast their behavior with one another. Repeated exposure to this topic is the best tactic because similar terms are employed for different functions and it would be a horrible mistake to confuse one function for another. Expect me to revisit this exact same walkthrough of common functions every time we have occasion to discuss a new one in depth. Recall that a timing diagram of a timer executing the on delay or delay on energized function would look like this. When the controlling input is energized at this instant here, the associated contacts do not instantaneously switch to their opposite state. The normally closed time open contact remains closed and the normally open time closed contact remains open. Only after the predetermined delay period T has elapsed do the contacts change states here. The normally closed time open contact opens and the normally open time closed contact closes. When the controlling input is de-energized here the associated contacts quasi-instantaneously revert to their normal deactivated state. The normally closed time open contact recloses and the normally open time closed contact reopens. The on delay timer could be used to turn another motor on a measurable time period after another has started. Compare this behavior to a timer executing the off delay function. A timing diagram of a timer executing the off delay function sometimes called a delay on de-energize or DODE would look like this. When the controlling input is energized at this instant here, the associated contacts quasi-instantaneously switch their opposite state, just like a regular control relay. The normally closed time closed contact opens and the normally open time open contact closes. However, when the controlling input is de-energized here, the associated contacts maintain the asserted state. The normally closed time closed contact remains open and the normally open time open contact remains open. Only after the predetermined delay period T has elapsed do the contacts revert to their deactivated state. The normally closed time closed contact recloses and the normally open time open contact reopens. Note the different terminology and schematic symbols employed by the off delay in comparison to that of the on delay. They're opposite, as one would expect. An off delay could be used to keep one motor running for a measurable period after you turn another one off. Note for this general purpose orientation, I've purposely simplified the timing diagram of an off delay timer. Compare this behavior to a timer executing the on and off delay function. A timing diagram of a timer executing the on and off delay function would look like this. An on and off delay, as the name implies, executes a combination of the on delay and off delay function. When the controlling input is energized at this instant here, the associated contacts do not immediately switch to their opposite state. The normally closed contact remains closed and the normally open contact remains open. Only after the predetermined delay period T1 has elapsed do the contacts change states here. The normally closed contact opens and the normally open contact closes. This is the on delay portion of the on and off delay function. When the controlling input is de-energized at this instant here, the associated contacts do not immediately switch to their opposite state, but rather maintain their activated state. The normally closed contact remains open, and the normally open contact remains closed. Only after the predetermined delay period T2 has elapsed,
do the contacts revert to their deactivated state? The normally closed contacts reclose and the normally open contacts reopen. This is the off delay portion of the on and off delay function. A symmetric on and off delay timer means the on delay and off delay time period are equal to each other. T1 equals T2. To set a symmetric on and off delay timer would necessitate only one delay adjustment. In contrast, an asymmetric on and off delay timer means the on delay and off delay are not equal to each other. T1 does not equal T2. Timers executing an asymmetric on and off delay would require two independently adjustable delay periods. An on and off delay timer could be used to coordinate two motors such that motor B stops a period after motor A starts, then motor B stops a period after motor A stops. Note for this general purpose orientation, I purposely simplified the timing diagram of the on and off delay timer. Compare this behavior to a timer executing the flash function, sometimes called repeat or recycle. A timing diagram of a timer executing the flash function would look like this. When the controlling input is energized at this instant here, the associated contacts continuously alternate between the activated and deactivated state with a measurable period. Similar to our previous discussion about on and off delay timers, the flash function might be symmetric, where the activation period is equal in magnitude to the deactivation period, or asymmetric, where the activation and deactivation periods are independently adjustable. A symmetric flash would necessitate only one adjustment. In contrast, an asymmetric flash would necessitate two adjustment points, one for delay period T1, one for delay period T2. The flash function could be used to create a super annoying warning strobe when a motor is energized, or perhaps timeshare a load between two different motors. Compare this behavior to a timer executing the one-shot function. A timing diagram of a timer executing the one-shot function would look like this. For a positive or rising edge triggered one-shot, when the controlling input is energized at this instant here, the associated contacts only temporarily assume the opposite activated state for a period T, and then revert to their deactivated state, despite the controlling input still being energized. This would be a rising or positive edge triggered one shot, and essentially does exactly what the name suggests, and that the one shot function is only enabled once for a period T on a rising or positive going transition of the controlling input. Alternatively, a negative or falling edge triggered one shot is one that the one shot function is only enabled once for a period T on a falling or negative going transition of the controlling input. One shots can be used to a certain output for a desired time period following the energized or de-energized transition of another device. One shots are particularly interesting because manufacturers occasionally include a slew of handy features, including resets and retriggerable versus non retriggerable one shots. Note for this general purpose orientation, I've purposely simplified the timing diagram for rising and falling edge one shots. Finally, compare this behavior to a timer executing the cumulative on delay function. A cumulative on delay timer is a record keeping function where the timer does not temporarily shift the outputs but rather keeps track of how long its controlling input has been energized. Only after the controlling input has been asserted for the predetermined period of time do the outputs respond. Note, despite the controlling input being discontinuously energized, only once the timer has accumulated the required delay period here do the contacts switch to their activated opposite states. Such a timer could be used to keep track of how long a particular controlling input has been asserted and then alert the system that some maintenance or other task must occur. I like to think of cumulative on delay timers as little accountants that keep track of how long the controlling input has been asserted and continually monitor how much time remains in the bank before it activates the output. Note for this general purpose orientation, I've purposely simplified the timing diagram for cumulative on delay timers. To be sure there are other timer functions and twisted offspring of unholy unions of these common functions. However, these are more than likely the most common timer functions you'll run across. This orientation is intended to be general in nature and does not dive into specifics nor manufacture idiosyncrasies. Be aware of subtle differences in different terminology used to describe the same features. Returning to the topic at hand, on and off delay timers, we recall that a simplistic timing diagram of a timer executing the on and off delay would look like this. An on and off delay, as the name implies, 
executes a combination of the on-delay and off-delay function. When the controlling input is energized at this instant here, the associated contacts do not instantaneously switch to their opposite states. The normally closed contact remains closed, and the normally open contact remains open. Only after the predetermined on-delay period, T1, has elapsed, do the contacts change states here. The normally closed contact opens, and the normally open contact closes. This is the on-delay portion of the on and off delay function. When the associated controlling input is de-energized at this instant here, the associated contacts do not instantaneously switch to their opposite state, but rather maintain their activated state. The normally closed contact remains open, and the normally open contact remains closed. Only after the predetermined off delay period, T2 has elapsed, do the contacts revert to their deactivated state. The normally closed contact recloses, and the normally open contacts reopen. This is the off delay portion of the on and off delay function. A symmetric on and off delay timer means the on delay and off delay are equal to each other. T1 equals T2. To set a symmetric on and off delay timer would necessitate only one delay adjustment. In contrast, an asymmetric on and off delay timer means the on delay and off delay periods are not equal to each other. T1 does not equal T2. Timers executing an asymmetric on and off delay would require two independently adjustable delay periods. While this timing diagram illustrates the on and off delay function in its simplest form, the truth of the matter is that not all timers are this simple. Being solid state devices, the microchip conducting the timing operation often needs to be continuously powered up for the timer to execute the on and off delay function. The internal circuitry of the microchip would be responsible for keeping the associated contacts in their opposite state for the required delay period after the controlling input is de-energized. For this reason, timers executing the on and off delay function often necessitate an additional auxiliary controlling input, often illustrated as a coil with three inputs, A1, A2, an auxiliary, input, or B. The coil from A1 to A2 must be continually energized for the timer to properly function. The auxiliary controlling input now serves as the initiation signal for the on and off delay function, whereas the coil serves to simply power the timer. Note for the purposes of this general lecture, I'm trying to avoid getting entangled in manufacturer specifics. It is your responsibility to interpret the timing diagram for your particular multifunction timer of interest. A timing diagram of a timer necessitating an auxiliary controlling input executing the on and off delay function might look something like this. Given the device is constantly powered up using the A1 to A2 terminals, when the auxiliary controlling input is energized at this instant here, the associated contacts do not immediately switch to their opposite states, but rather maintain the deactivated state for a predetermined on delay period, T1. Only after the predetermined on delay period has elapsed, do the contacts change states here. This is the on delay portion of an on and off delay timer. When the controlling input is de-energized at this instant here, the associated contacts do not immediately return to their deactivated states, but rather maintain the activated state for a predetermined off delay period, T2. Only after the predetermined off delay period has elapsed, do the contacts return to their deactivated states here. This is the off delay portion of an on and off delay timer. Note if the input is de-energized prior to the on delay period elapsing, the timer would reset. A modified timing diagram illustrating this act appears here. When the controlling input is energized, the timer initiates the on delay. However, when de-energized prior to the on delay period elapsing, the initial delay is overridden. Only when the input is continually energized for longer than the on delay period do the contacts change states here. Ordinarily, on and off delay timers are not cumulative. We'll examine cumulative on delay timers in later lectures that keep a running tally of how long the input is discontinuously asserted. Additionally, note if a timer necessitating an auxiliary controlling input executing the on and off delay function lost power to the coil during the off delay period, the timer would halt the delay and immediately return the contacts to their deactivated state and reset the timer. This allows an on and off delay timer conducting the off delay 
to be overridden by an emergency input for immediate stop purposes. A modified timing diagram illustrating this act appears here. We'll examine this feature in a moment. To set up a multifunction timer to execute the on end off delay function, a technician must first choose the correct function and then set the delay period. Here's an example of a multifunction timer with both a two terminal coil and an additional auxiliary controlling input. A timing diagram of this timer executing the on end off delay function looks exactly as I've illustrated. This particular timer can perform eight different functions, A through H. To set this particular multifunction timer to perform the on end off delay function for a period of five seconds, a technician would rotate the function selector to function C, the on end off delay function as illustrated in the table. Then a technician would choose an appropriate delay. This multifunction timer has a symmetric on end off delay function that necessitates only a single delay period adjustment. This particular manufacturer necessitates a two-step process to adjust the delay period. First, select the range, and then adjust the range percentage. The range selection presents possibilities from one second up to 100 hours. The percentage can then be used to fine tune the delay period inside this range. For example, 50% of 10 seconds would be a delay of five seconds. Note this timer has two indicator LEDs one that indicates when the device is powered up, and another that indicates when the outputs are in their activated state. Unfortunately, it does not have an LED indicating when the auxiliary controlling input is asserted. This would be a great feature, but sometimes you've got to work with the tools you've got on hand. You know you set up the on and off delay timer correctly if you power up the device, assert the controlling auxiliary input at this moment here, wait five seconds, and then see the output change states. The on delay seemed to work fine, Check the off delay portion of the timer. We need to de-energize the auxiliary controlling input here, wait five seconds, then see the outputs return to their deactivated states. This timer seems to be executing the symmetric on and off delay function quite nicely. Troubleshooters take note. A multifunction timer executing the right function at the wrong time needs to have the delay adjusted. In contrast, a multifunction timer executing the wrong function at the right time needs to have the function adjusted. I'd like to say that a misinterpretation of functions is a rare occurrence, but it isn't, and you need to be aware of this possibility. You'll note timers executing solely the on delay or solely the off delay sometimes have their own schematic symbols. However, multifunction timers executing the on and off delay are often represented schematically as regular normally closed or regular normally open contacts. The documentation associated with the ladder logic diagram should clearly indicate that these contacts are performing the on and off delay function. Let's now move on to the remaining topic of this lecture, putting a timer executing the on and off delay function to use. The on and off delay timer is characterized by a delayed transition of the associated contacts appeared after the controlling input has been energized. This is the on delay, and a delayed transition of the associated contacts appeared after the controlling input has been de-energized. This is the off delay, for these examples, we'll make use of a multifunction timer that necessitates the coil be continuously powered and requires the use of an auxiliary controlling input as illustrated in this timing diagram. The classic introductory example of an on and off delay timer is a time delayed response of pilot lights. Note the coil of timer relay TR1 is continuously powered by the connection in rung one. Stop two would serve to completely depower the timer. The three wire control circuit in rung two and three serves to simultaneously energize the coil of a regular control relay, CR1, and the auxiliary controlling input of timer relay TR1. Contact CR1A, associated with regular control relay CR1, serves only as holding contact, allowing the circuit to maintain the last asserted state. Rung 4 contains a normally closed contact, TR1A, associated with timer relay TR1, executing the on and off delay function in series with a red pilot light. Rung 5 contains a normally open TR1B contact associated with timer relay TR1 executing the on and off delay function in series with a green pilot light. Let's assume the timer executing the on and off delay function is symmetric in nature and set to execute a 5 second delay. Note the start state of this system is red light on, green light off. When an operator presses start, the coil of control relay CR1 and the auxiliary controlling input of timer relay TR1 are both energized. 
contact CR1A immediately switches to the activated closed state and establishes a holding circuit. An operator can now release the start button. In contrast, the contacts associated with timer relay TR1 executing the on and off delay function do not immediately change states. TR1A remains closed and TR1B remains open only after the on delay period of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 seconds does TR1A open and TR1B close. The red light turns off and the green light turns on. When an operator presses and releases stop 1, both the coil of control relay CR1 and the auxiliary controlling input signal to timer relay TR1 are de-energized. Contact CR1A immediately returns to the deactivated state and removes the holding circuit. An operator can release the stop 1 button. Contact CR1A and TR1B, executing the on and off delay function, however, momentarily remain in their activated state. Only after the predetermined off delay period of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 seconds has elapsed do these contacts return to their deactivated states. TR1A contact recloses and TR1B contact reopens. The red light turns on and the green light turns off. We've returned to the start state of our system. Let's examine the function of both stop 1 and stop 2 when triggered at various points in an ongoing on and off delay action. Consider what happens when an operator presses and releases start and then presses and releases stop 1 prior to the on delay portion of the on and off delay function elapsing. As previously, the closure of the start button energizes the coil of control relay CR1 and the auxiliary input of timer relay TR1. The holding circuit is immediately established by CR1A and timer relay TR1 begins the on delay countdown while TR1A and TR1B remain in the deactivated state. If an operator press stop 1 prior to the on delay period elapsing, both the coil of control relay CR1 and the auxiliary controlling input signal to timer relay TR1 are de-energized. The CR1A contact opens, the timer resets, and the contacts never change states. We essentially never see this system leave the start state. Similarly, consider what happens when an operator presses and releases start, waits for the on delay period to elapse, thereby allowing the lights to change states, then presses and releases stop 1, and then activates stop 2 prior to the off delay period elapsing, depowering the timer. As previously, the closure of the start button energizes the coil of control relay CR1 and the auxiliary controlling input of timer relay TR1. The holding circuit is immediately established by CR1A, allowing an operator to release the start button. Timer relay TR1 begins the on delay countdown, while TR1A and TR1B remain in the deactivated state. After the on delay period of 5 seconds has elapsed, TR1A and TR1B switch to their opposite activated state. TR1A opens and TR1B closes. The red light turns off and the green light turns on. As previously, when an operator presses and releases stop 1, both the coil of control relay CR1 and the auxiliary controlling input signal to timer relay TR1 are de-energized. Contact CR1A immediately returns to the deactivated state and removes the holding circuit. An operator can now release the stop 1 button. The contacts TR1A and TR1B, executing the on and off delay function, however momentarily maintain their activated state as the timer initiates the off delay countdown, in this case 5 seconds. Let's say halfway through this countdown, however, an operator presses stop 2. In this case, the timer is completely depowered and reset, and all associated contacts immediately return to their deactivated states. Tier 1A immediately recloses and Tier 1B immediately reopens. The red light turns on and the green light turns off. An operator can now release stop 2. We've returned to the start state of our system, having skipped the off delay. Stop 2 therefore serves as a means of overriding an ongoing off delay period. Additionally, stop 2 could also be used to clear, depower, and reset the timer during an ongoing on delay period. Consider this slightly modified ladder logic diagram illustrating the time delayed response of an on and off delay timer. Note we've ditched the regular control relay CR1 and the holding contact CR1A. CR1A has been replaced with TR1C, yet another contact associated with timer relay TR1 
also executing the on and off delay function. Let's assume the on and off delay period is symmetric and again set to 5 seconds. If you truly understand the behavior of an on and off delay timer, you should be able to predict how this system works given the following four scenarios. Scenario 1 and 2 assume the system is in the deactivated start state. Red light on, green light off. The first scenario is when an operator presses and immediately releases start. The next scenario is when an operator presses and holds start closed for a period of longer than 5 seconds. Scenario 3 and 4 assume the system is in the activated state of red light off and green light on. First, when an operator presses and immediately releases stop 1. And next, when an operator presses and holds stop 1 open for a period of longer than 5 seconds. By all means, pause the lecture and think about this. If you're tracking, here's how the circuit responds to the first scenario. In the deactivated state, when an operator presses and immediately releases start. Long story short, it doesn't. If an operator presses and releases start, the auxiliary controlling input of timer relay TR1 is only momentarily energized and when energized initiates the 5 second on delay period. The holding contact TR1C remains in the open state while the on delay period is counting down. The moment an operator releases the start button, the auxiliary controlling input of timer relay TR1 is de-energized and the delay is reset back to zero. The second scenario is slightly different. Only when an operator presses and holds start closed for a period of longer than the predetermined 5 second delay do the associated timer contacts change states. After the auxiliary controlling input of timer relay TR1 has been continuously energized for a period of 5 seconds, does the TR1C holding contact close and establish the holding circuit? Additionally, TR1A opens and TR1B closes. Given the holding circuit is now established, an operator can now release start. The red light is off and the green light is on. Scenarios 3 and 4 assume we are now in this activated state. First, if an operator presses and then immediately releases stop 1 prior to the off delay period elapsing, the reclosure of stop 1 reasserts the auxiliary controlling input to timer relay TR1 and the contacts remain in their activated state. Pressing and immediately releasing stop 1 therefore does not immediately stop the system due to the still established holding circuit made possible by the TR1C contact. The second scenario is different. Only when an operator presses and holds stop 1 for a period of longer than the predetermined 5 second delay do the associated contacts return to their deactivated state and return the system to the start state. As previously, when an operator presses stop 1, the input signal to timer relay TR1 is de-energized and the contacts begin the off delay countdown. The associated contacts TR1A, TR1B, and TR1C do not immediately return to their deactivated state, but rather remain in their activated state for the adjustable delay period. TR1A remains open, TR1B remains closed, as does TR1C. The red light remains off and the green light remains on and the holding circuit remains in waiting during the off delay period. Only when an operator has enough patience to hold stop 1 open for a period of longer than the off delay period of 5 seconds do the contacts associated with the timer relay change states. Tier 1A closes, Tier 1B opens, as does Tier 1C. The red light turns on, the green light turns off and the holding circuit is broken. An operator can now release the stop 1 button. If you think about it, the function of both the start and stop 1 button in this particular circuit is to allow the operator a full 5 seconds to contemplate if starting up or shutting down this system is really, 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 really what they mean to do. Such a ladder logic diagram could be used to ensure that the startup and shutdown of some expensive or mission critical system isn't just some passing fancy, but rather an intentional action you're at least willing to wait for 5 seconds to happen. As previously, stop 2 would serve to completely depower the timer relay for the purposes of overriding whatever time function is occurring at that moment and returns the system to the de-energized start state. Red light on, green light off. I think this is a pretty fun example circuit that illustrates the timed response of on and off delay timers. Besides making some stupid lights blink, a timer relay executing the on and off delay function can also be used to coordinate some industrial task. Consider a two-part system that when started necessitates part A start immediately and then brings part B online a moment afterwards. When stopped, 
the system necessitates part A stop immediately, then takes part B offline a moment afterwards. The classic example might be some process A that takes a while to heat up, and part B is a fan that cools or distributes the heat produced by A. It would make sense then to delay the start of the second process until the first process is given a chance to heat up. When shut down, the A process is immediately halted but still warm. The still activated fan continues to cool or distribute the heat for a predetermined off delay period. Consider an industrial three phase heater and a fan controlled by this letter logic diagram. By all means, pause the lecture and see if you can predict how this system responds given timer relay TR1 is executing the on and off delay function with a symmetric delay of 30 seconds. Note that temperature switch TS1 is normally closed by nature. However, it is being held open by being exposed to temperature conditions in excess of its set point, let's say a reasonable 68 degrees Fahrenheit or approximately 20 degrees Celsius. Assuming the space this system is intended to condition is indeed above 68 degrees Fahrenheit, the held open TS1 serves to keep both the heater and fan de-energized. However, let's say your lazy lab partner bursts in five minutes prior to class to copy your homework answers and forgets to close the door. Let's assume it's midwinter in one of those vodka drinking countries where nobody has a suntan. The moment TS1 experiences temperatures below its set value, it recloses and immediately energizes the H contactor coil and the auxiliary input of timer relay TR1. The H primary contacts immediately close and the heater starts heating up. Contact TR1B, however, remains open as the timer initiates the on delay portion of the on and off delay countdown. The heater is allowed a chance to heat up. 30 seconds later, the TR1B contact closes and energizes the F contactor coil. The F primary contacts close and the fan springs to life, distributing the heat into the conditioned space. When temperature in the conditioned space rises above the set value of the temperature switch, in this case 68 degrees Fahrenheit, TS1 opens and de-energizes the H contactor coil and the auxiliary controlling input of timer relay TR1. The H primary contacts immediately open. Contact tier 1B, however, remains closed as the timer initiates the off delay countdown portion of the on and off delay timer. The fan continues to distribute the accumulated heat. 30 seconds later, the tier 1B contact reopens and de energizes the F contactor coil. The F primary contacts open and the fan free spins to a halt. Temperature in the condition space has risen above the set value and will slowly fall, provided you have enough sense to close the door. This controlled overheating and thermal inertia of the conditioned space stabilize over time with cyclical reapplications of heat. More to the point of this lecture, the timer executing the on and off delay function makes it possible to accomplish two tasks that serve to contribute to the efficient operation of this system. One, give the heater a chance to heat up prior to distributing the heat. And two, allow the fan to temporarily continue to distribute accumulated heat after the heater is turned off. Note the e-stop would serve to not only depower and reset the timer, but also completely depower the system. Additionally, note the normally closed overload contact on the fan motor would also serve a similar purpose. All right, that is that for this lecture. In conclusion, this lecture took a brief look at multifunction timers performing the on and off delay function. We introduced the on and off delay function reviewed general timer functions, learned how to set up an example timer relay to perform the on and off delay function, and finally employed a timer executing the on and off delay function in several illustrated examples. Remember to review these concepts as often as you need to really drive it home. Imagine how well lab will go if you know what you're doing. Thank you very much for your attention and interest, and we'll see you again during the next lecture of our series. Remember to tell your lazy lab partner about this resource, and be sure to check out the Big Bad Tech channel for additional resources and updates. Thank <laughs> you.